Hey guys, Dr. Tristan here. Happy Monday. I hope you have all had a great week, uh, weekend, and um, it is so cold in Joburg, so I hope you're keeping warm. Um, so I just thought that in my next series of Dr. Tristan Explains to the Public, I will um, have a chat with you all about fasting and why you can't eat before surgery and why everybody that you meet before you come to um, theatre, including the anaesthetist, the nurses, the surgeons, etc., will all ask you multiple times, when last did you eat? So before we get into that, guys, remember tonight we've got our long episode coming out, Pediatric Neuroanesthesia. We discuss pediatric neurophysiology as well as um, specific cases in peds neuro. So posterior fossa tumors, VP shunts, and then we're going to do a special extra episode on scoliosis surgery. And then don't forget about the first guest live with Dr. Ellen Kemp on Wednesday, 7.30 Central African time. And um, that will be a discussion on cardiac anesthesia, both adults and peds for cardiac and non-cardiac surgery like you've never heard before. You can go straight if you have to. Um, so... Please, please, please register for that on TikTok. I'm going to put the link on YouTube to register for it as well so that you get um, uh, exclusive access as soon as we go live. It'll be on all platforms, Facebook, X, Instagram, etc. <laughs> Sorry, we're having some fun in Joburg traffic. Um, those of you that live in Joburg will certainly know how people drive. Anyway, so let's get back to the theme of today, fasting. And um, remember that this is not medical advice guys it is just information for the public please please if you are a patient or you are a student or registrar please adhere to the fasting guidelines that your anesthetist or your institution is practicing now that that's out the way fasting so fasting refers to a period whereby you are nil per mouth or what we say in the um south african or british world where we still use the latin we say npo which stands for nil which stands for nil per us. So, we need you to be fasted before you come for anesthesia because of the risk of aspiration. Now, what is aspiration? Aspiration is whereby gastric contents, whether liquid, solid, or particulate, which refers to fine particles suspended in a liquid. Imagine like soup or pup after you've chewed it. If that goes into your lungs, we call that aspiration. That is the first step in what can lead to an aspiration pneumonia. Now, aspiration pneumonia is incredibly serious because your lungs, your beautiful, gentle alveoli that are tiny, tiny air sacs, imagine millions of little bubble wrap bubbles. Now, imagine bathing that in stomach acid, in alcohol, in pup, in uh, McDonald's, whatever you can think of, in milk. It is, first of all, acidic, so it burns the lungs. And secondly, the um, bacteria that are in your stomach and in the food and in your mouth and everything that go into the lungs can cause a severe, severe pneumonia. So they get a combination of what we call chemical pneumonitis. So that is a chemical inflammation of the lungs from the acid. And they get an infection because of the bacteria that get in there. So it's a terribly serious condition and it has a morbidity rate which means severe um, need for ICU, long-term therapy, the need to be on a ventilator. That can happen in upwards of 80% of aspiration pneumonia. And scarily, depending on where it happens, what type of food or gastric contents go into the lungs, the mortality rate, so the rate at which people can die, is anywhere from 20%, so one in five people, all the way up to, God forbid, 50%. One in every two people that have a severe aspiration pneumonitis or pneumonia may die. So it's incredibly important, guys, that you don't eat before you come to theatre. And why is this risk of aspiration so high? Well, you can imagine, as you and I are standing or sitting right now, we have an esophagus that leads into the stomach, which is a muscular sac which can contract. Now, at the top of that stomach, at the bottom of the esophagus is a sphincter, a so-called valve, and that allows food to enter the stomach and prevents food from going back up into the esophagus. 
Now, those of you that suffer from reflux will know, or heartburn will know that sometimes, depending on what you eat or how much you've indulged, pies, pastries, alcohol, seafood, etc., red wine, you may get reflux or heartburn, and that is where the stomach contents are very acidic, they're very active, and acid is splashing up. Ooh, I just hit myself in the face. Acid is, acid is splashing up the, um, the esophagus. So now you can just imagine if you've got a big stomach full of a nice heavy McDonald's meal and a McFlurry and all of that, and you lie down flat, and I then induce anesthesia, as I explained to you in my previous video, whereby I give you propofol or I give you gas and your whole body goes to sleep and you relax. Everything, now that you're lying in this direction, everything that's in your stomach is gonna go like this and it's gonna fill the mouth and start pouring out. And when it happens, trust me, as an anesthetist, it is scary because you're about to put a tube in, you're looking at an airway where there should only be air and suddenly it's like a plug, a hole in the bath, and there's now fluid rushing into this airway. And you have to stick a tube in, blow up the cuff and protect that airway as rapidly as possible. And I've had to do that for vomit, blood, all of those things. So that's the risk is aspiration. So what are the guidelines? Well, they are better than what you may have thought or may have been exposed to before because we also recognize the negative effects, guys, of fasting for too long. You become dehydrated, you become grumpy, your sugar drops. But what it means in anesthesia is that if we fast you, if you're starved for too long, it actually sets up a stress response. So your body is under stress. Now it's really counterintuitive when you're coming for surgery, whether that be major or minor, that we would want to um, stress your body unnecessarily beforehand. And for kids, it's even more of an issue because remember, they don't have the stores. We spoke about this in the first lecture on pediatric anesthesia considerations. They don't have the fat stores to, uh, and the glycogen stores to keep their glucose up and they get dehydrated very quickly. So what do we now recommend? Before any form of anesthesia or sedation, in my practice, these are my recommendations. They are evidence-based, which you can find on my website. Um, eight hours, you need to not eat a large, fatty, heavy meal. So pup and vors, McDonald's, uh, a big KFC breakfast, uh, a big wimpy breakfast, or a KFC bucket or something like that. Those types of things. And I would recommend, guys, you're going for surgery or sedation, don't go out and go, you know, balls to the wall and have a massive meal the night before. However, for all other meals, my starvation guideline is six hours for a light meal. So things like a toasted sandwich, one, one hamburger, a couple of slices of pizza, maybe some pasta, a steak and veggies, etc. Six hours fasting for adults, children, everyone. Six hours fasting for all solid food. Then, if you are thirsty, you are welcome to drink clear liquids up until two hours before surgery for adults. That includes water, black tea, black coffee, rooibos, black, black rooibos with honey, Energade, uh, Coca-Cola, Sprite, etc. We used to think that carbonated drinks were high risk, but the evidence shows that they are not. And you can consume that fairly liberally until two hours before your surgery if you're an adult. Then you stop. For children that are on formula milk, they can have a bottle six hours before their anesthesia. If they are on breast milk, they can have breast milk four hours before their anesthesia. And then in children, small children especially, I allow them to drink clear fluids with glucose in it up to one hour before their surgery. So let's run through it again, guys. Eight hours, no big meals. Six hours, no food at all. Six hours, no more formula milk. Four hours, they can only have breast milk. Two hours for adults, you can drink clear liquids. And for small children, they can drink clear liquids up until one hour before their anesthetic. I hope you guys found this informative and interesting. And um, please share, like, and subscribe. And just remember guys, this is if you are coming to me as your anesthetist, listen to the fasting guidelines that you are given by your anesthetist. Thanks so much. And you'll see me later today for neuroanesthesia and everything pediatric neurosurgery. Thanks guys. 
have a great, great day.